a reproduction of a reconstruction of an antique, the LK Chen Wo Yao Dao. Hey everybody, this is Vincent Tung, the Wandering Warrior. Now today I've got something really special. It's made by LK Chen and it's a Wo Yao Dao. Now Wo comes from Wo Ko, which is kind of a derogatory term in the Ming Dynasty for Japanese pirates. And Yao Dao, Yao means waste, and Dao is single edge blade, or in this case a saber. So it's a Japanese styled waist saber, something meant to be worn and slung off of your belt. Now you'll notice a couple interesting things about this, but before we dive into that, what exactly is a Wo Yao Dao or a Wo Dao? All right, now here we have an illustration showing a battle between the Ming Dynasty military on the left-hand side and the Wo Ko forces on the right-hand side. So the Wo Ko are these Japanese-styled pirates. Now, many of them were not actually Japanese. Oftentimes, the majority were Southern Chinese or Okinawans or other groups of people providing the logistical and naval expertise to allow these Japanese warriors to loot the coastlines. They were a fearsome force, and although, of course, they used spears, archery, occasionally guns, they were perhaps most famous for their blades, the odachi, two-handed battle sword of the Japanese. And the Japanese blades at this time were very influential throughout Asia. Ainu were using Japanese blades and refitting them. Ryukyuans or Okinawans were doing the same thing, buying Japanese blades and making them one-handers. Koreans were getting influenced by the Japanese uh, in Luzon, they have a loan word for swords, not just tabak, but katana. Katana is a word got from the Japanese for swords. The Vietnamese, the Cambodians, the Thai, they would also get some level of influence uh, from the Japanese. And so you see some indigenous dab or dab designs, but also some Japanese influence ones. And you know what? The Chinese were no different. I guess we we're all just weaves, huh? They were importing a lot of Japanese blades. They were also imitating the Japanese style, but with Chinese forging techniques. And perhaps most famously, one of the generals that was pitted against the Woko threat and managed to subdue them, Qi Ji Guang, he's famous for having a lot of Japanese style blades made for his military, for his army that he used against the pirates. So this particular LK Chen blade was actually based on a reconstruction project uh, that we can see here on Mandarin Mansion. Now, Mandarin Mansion is my buddy Peter Decker's website. It's an amazing resource. He really puts a lot into the community. This antique that's been reconstructed is a prime example of a qi jia dao. Now, qi jia dao qi is, you know, qi ji guang the general, jia is family, and dao is saber. As we take a look at this guy, it's, uh, it was made in a early Qing style in its reconstruction. The blade is what survived, and the blade is the clearly Japanese-influenced aspect. You can see that right here. This is, this, this is the, the blade is antique. Everything else has been reconstructed based on what it probably looked like in the early Qing dynasty. So this is quite the project. I mean, this is a an antique Wo Dao, but you know, reconstructed thanks to the expertise of Vince Evans, Phil Tom, and Daniel Hu. LK Chen would base their reproduction off of this reconstruction on an antique blade. Come over.
you can see here the Fang Shi angular hilt style with this disc guard with something of a dish here. And you can see here with the sort of fanned out pommel peened at the end. There's a little bit of that glue showing. Don't like that. A little bit of that glue. You can see it here as well. I don't love it, but it is what it is. Leather or faux leather, stitched. Solid fittings, um, not perfectly aligned, but solid. Let's take a look at the blade. Now here we can see the seemingly southern style Tunko here. A lot of old Turco-Mongol sabers had this. There's obviously a version of it on Japanese swords. And, uh, and this one has it too. A lot of Chinese swords have it. Some Chinese Dao do not have it, but uh, many do. And that's inherited from the old days on the Turco-Mongol sabers. But overall, uh, Japanese looking sword, blade, on characteristically late Ming, early Qing style hilt, Fang Shi angular style, which some say is late Ming, some say is a very Manchu style. It's hard to say at the end of the day this is a shared culture, shared technology, but it does seem like most of the Fang Shi blades of this type, especially with that fanning pommel, and the iron mounts, they tend to be Manchu. So I don't know if this is a, a Manchu thing or if it was simply popularized or popular with the Jurchens and later Manchus that were fighting in the late Ming Dynasty, early Qing Dynasty. Not sure. Anyways, I'm sure the uh, ethno-nationalists will argue this one to death. Let's, uh, let's do some moving around and uh, let's do some cutting. Now I've got to say, the Fang Shi, the angular grip, it, uh, it's definitely less comfortable than rounded grips, but it makes it really hard for you to lose your alignment and gives you a very positive feeling whenever you cut. It's like, I know exactly where this thing's going. Now, in some ways it's a little harder on the hands, maybe it is, but uh, I'm sure in some ways that, that uh, performance enhancement is maybe well worth it. All right, well, let's, uh, let's do some cutting. Let's keep cutting.
Now, although I am not a master at cutting, cutting technique here feels really easy. I think the Fang Shi style grip, the angular style, really helps with the alignment. The blade profile, the blade shape, the edge geometry makes it an amazing cutter. And even though, according to Peter Decker's research, this is supposed to be a cavalry sword, I think given the fact that cavalry was meant to fight both on horse as well as dismount and fight as mounted infantry in the Manchu, Chinese, Mongolian context, I think it makes sense why this plays so well, even though I'm obviously on foot. Pretty easy with this guy. Pretty easy. Yeah, I really, I'm really, really liking this uh, Feng Shi uh, ergonomic grip design. And uh, man, this blade is just, just, it's just great. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, you know, you guys can obviously come to your own conclusions about the quality of the fit and fittings and of the blade. But uh, if you're interested in late uh, Ming Cao and early Qing Cao design. This, uh, this gets, gets pretty high marks from me. In any case, if you like this kind of content, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Consider becoming a patron of mine on Patreon so I can keep doing what I love to do and giving you guys the good stuff. Uh, and as always, thank you for following me on my journey. I salute yours.